Hello everybody. Uh, this is my fourth video in a series about poor Hepcat. We are now on uh, notes about C, collecting data, and this one is specifically about the history of measurement. So let's get going. Um, there are many things that we can collect data about, and therefore measure. Some of them include length, width, height, mass, temperature, viscosity, density, but that is literally just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many things that we can still measure, but those are just a few of the things we can measure. But in order to really understand and appreciate measurement, we need to have a little bit of a sense of the history of measurements and um, what they do and how they came about. So uh, objects were measured to aid commerce, um, trade, uh, money. So many early measurements were based on body parts. We will actually start with a system that was used in Egypt um, and it was based on some very useful things but of course there was a problem. They in Egypt used things like the cubit. The cubit was the distance from your elbow to the tip of your middle finger. So the cubit, the tip of your elbow to your middle finger was a common measurement. Smaller than that was a span. The span is the distance between the thumb and the little finger when the hand is stretched out naturally. Now you don't want to just force anything, but if you just hold your hand out and spread it as far as you naturally can, it's the distance from the tip of your pinky to the tip of your thumb. Next smallest is called the palm. And not surprisingly, that is the width of your palm. So I am showing you the width of my hand. That is called a palm. And then the smallest one is called a digit and that is a cr the distance across, it's not the length of, it is the width of your index finger. So what people could do was they could measure things in digits. If that wasn't efficient, they could use palms and measure. If that wasn't going fast enough, they could measure things in spans. And if that wasn't getting the job fast enough, they could start measuring in cubits and measure how many cubits it took to get something measured. Well, a really great thing about that system is you always have the tools with you. You always have your arm and your hand and your fingers. That is a system that you are always carrying with you. So if you need to measure how many cubits a table is wide and long, perfect. I got my cubit right here. And we could measure this stuff like that. And tomorrow in class, I may have you measure the length of the room in cubits and spans. But right now, um, if you have it at home with you or just go grab any book you can, measure the length of the book in digits finger to finger, palms, spans, and cubits. Well, digits can be done for your textbook. Palms can be done, but you usually will have part of a palm. Spans, you may not even use two spans to get the length of your textbook. And your textbook isn't even as long as a cubit. So it's workable, but and you always have it with you, but there were some issues. The biggest issue is, number two, people have different sized body parts, so your cubit and my cubit might be the same, but chances are they weren't the same. And number three, the ratio of a cubit to a span may be different for different people, so your cubit and mine might be the same, but our spans may not. Body part measurements are not an accurate way of dealing with fractions. I mean, if you have a, a digits, that might be okay, but what do you do if you only measure to here? 
Are you going to say that's three quarters? Is that two thirds? It's just not an accurate way of doing it. And there was no way of talking to each other. If I gave you my measurements for a table in my cubits, spans, palms, and digits, and you went home and made that table based on my measurements, you're not going to build the same table that I had because our numbers don't correspond to our body parts because the body parts, our arms, are different sizes. So this was perfect if you were making all the tables based on your measurements, but if you had to talk to somebody, now the system breaks apart. So what was decided was, hey, instead of everybody having a system, let's all have the same system and let's base it on a standard, something everybody can agree on some standard to measure against. Well, especially in uh, Europe, everybody had a king, everybody had a, a queen, and they, always, they could just measure something on their king. So what they often did was they measured some body part of their, their king and said, this is what we're going to measure. The obvious, the obvious first guess on what they measured was they measured the king's foot. And that is where the measurement for a foot comes from. And if you actually put your foot on a tile in my classroom, all of the tiles in my room are square feet. And that is about the size of a foot. It's based on the dead king of England's foot. Well, that was fine. Oh, let me go back. That was fine, but the problem then became every time the king died, they had to get a new system. Because you, as the new king, you don't want the entire country, the entire kingdom, to be using a system based on the last king. You want it based on you. So every time a new king came into power, they would then have to get a new set of measurements. And an interesting little side, side fact about all this, what do we call the people who lead countries, like kings, queens, presidents? We call them rulers of their country. And that's why we have this thing. This thing is called a ruler. It is a foot long because it is based on the dead rulers of Europe who had their feet measured, and that's how the system was based on. So we at least have a standardized system now, but it was continuing to change every time a king or queen died. And it's just a horrible system. A foot is the average length of a man's foot. A yard is the average length of a legionnaire's stride. Basically, as a legionnaire was marching, it was how far he took every step. It is also about the measurement between the middle of Queen Victoria's neck to the tip of her middle finger. An inch, on average, is the distance between the tip of your thumb and your first knuckle. If you measure that distance, most people are pretty close to an inch. Well, that's all fine, but it makes doing conversions an absolute nightmare. 12 inches in a foot, 3 feet in a yard, 1,760 yards in a mile, three, or 1 league is 3 miles, 6 feet is a fathom, 22 yards is a chain. Most, half of those are ones you may have never even heard of, and they are just horrible to do conversions. Because if we wanted to know how many inches were in two and a half leagues, first of all, you'd have to know all these numbers or look them up. And it's two and a half times three times 1760 times three times 12. It's just way too much math and just way too much thinking. Well, the French then said, why are we always changing these systems every time a king comes into power? Napoleon was not a king, but he was very much a ruler and emperor. And in 1799, he decided, and the French decided, 
let's not change the system every time we get a new ruler. Let's just figure something out and stick with it. Let's measure something that never changes. So what they did was he commissioned a survey to figure out the distance between the equator and the North Pole. From the equator to the North Pole. They figured out what that distance was. Then they said, let's, do, let's divide this by a unit of 10. So 10, 100,000, 10,000, 100,000, million, 10 million, 100 million, billion. Let's use one of those numbers and divide that up so that we can get a measurement that is easy to use and we can make sticks out of it. What they did was they figured out that one ten millionth of that distance was a meter. And that's where we get this meter stick that you have used in your science classes. A meter is one ten millionth the distance between the equator and the North Pole. So if you go from the North Pole to the equator to the South Pole to the equator back to the North Pole, that distance is 40 million meters. That's how they figured that out. And it's a nice stick that I can hold between my hands. If we would have used a bigger number, the stick would have been littler. If we would have used a smaller number, the stick would be 10 times as big and wouldn't even fit in between the walls of my room. So 1 10 millionth is a meter. The nice thing about that system is we can convert by simply moving decimal points. And I will show you how to do that in a future video, but for now, we will just keep it at everything is divisible by 10. We don't have to remember 3 feet in a yard, 12 inches in a foot. We don't have to remember all those numbers. All we need to know is how to go from one to another. Well, that system is great, but there's a problem. And the problem is, these things that we thought would not change, the Earth is always turning, so seconds will never change. The meter is the distance between the equator and the North Pole, that will never change. Well, science has shown us that some of those things are changing, both of them with the Earth. Because of tectonic plates and the fact that all of the entire surface of the Earth is moving and these plates are moving, this distance between the the North Pole and the equator is changing by centimeters, but it is changing. So we can't just say that's the distance because it's not anymore. It's slightly different. And a whole second is depending on how fast the Earth is spinning and the fraction of a year is a day, the fraction of a day is an hour, the fraction of, a, of an hour is a second. We do all that to figure out a second. Well, we now know that the Earth is slowing down on its axis just a little bit. Every seven or eight years, we have to add a second to the year just to get everything lined up properly. So these things that we thought were correct are not. So now what we do is, is we do not technically use the metric system. We use what's called the system international, it's called the international system of units, but we call it the SI system. It's once again because in French, um, Spanish, most foreign languages, they put the adjective after the noun. So instead of international system, like we say, they say system international. So it's SI units. These are all based on... These are based on common definitions or samples. The SI system is based on definitions or samples. For example, I looked this up just for our notes. A second is no longer a fraction of a year, which is a fraction of days and all of these other things. We have now determined through science that a second is equal to 
631,770 vibrations of a cesium-133 atom. Scientists have determined that at a certain temperature, this kind of atom on the periodic table vibrates at a certain rate, and if it vibrates that many times, that's now how we define a second. And because the whole thing with the distance between the North Pole and the equator is changing, a meter is now defined as the distance light travels in a vacuum in 1 over 299,792,458 of a second. Which then we could use this to figure out what that is, because we now know what a second is. So a meter is how far a, the speed of uh, that light travels in so many vibrations of a cesium-133 atom. It's all crazy, it's all big numbers, small numbers, but the SI system now is based on these definitions and samples. There is a sample of a meter made out of a metal in a locked armed vault in Paris. There is a master copy of a kilogram in that same locked armed guard vault in Paris, France. We have master copies of these, either copies, samples, or definitions. We will probably use uh, some of this tomorrow in class, and uh, thank you very much.